Hello, my name is Helena and welcome to the CrocoBlog channel. In this video, I will guide you through the process of connecting the chat booking plugin with Google Calendar and email. I will show you how to do it in several ways, with the help of the Make Integration service and also by using the CrocoBlog built-in functionality. If you prefer other integration tools other than Make and want to connect other third-party services, calendars, CRMs and so on, the process will be very similar. Before you start, make sure you have your Jet Booking plugin activated, Jet Form Builder plugin activated too, and you have a Make account. I use it because they have quite a decent free plan. And it would be great to have Jet Engine as well. You will definitely need it for creating a custom post type for bookable item. Also, before connecting any services, you need to have the Jet Booking plugin set up with few bookable items added. In my example, those are properties to test the workflow. The setup process is simple. Start with a wizard for the basic configuration and use the settings to fine-tune advanced options. At the final step of the wizard, Jet Booking will automatically create a booking form. You can find it in the Jet Form Builder Forms Single Page Booking Form. We'll be using the form's post-submit actions to connect our automation sequence. Now, open the Make dashboard, go to Scenarios and click Create New. The new canvas will open with a long list of apps we can start with. We need a webhook. Choose Triggers, Custom Webhook, then in the drop-down select My Gateway Webhook. You will see a link here, so click copy link and let's get back to our booking form. Open the JET form tab. Here I already have the post submit action called apartment integration to connect form entries with JET booking. It was added automatically when I generated a form using the JET booking wizard. Now let's add one more post submit action called webhook. Simply paste the link you've just copied from the Make website and save the form. Switch back to Make and click the Redetermine Data Structure button. It means that Make will listen for events from our form so it can detect and fetch all the fields the form contains. It works because I've already pasted the webhook link which connects the form and Make. So fill out and send the test form to trigger the submit event. When you do, the webhook will capture all the form fields dynamically. OK, the form has been submitted. And when we switch to Make, you can see that the red button became green and it says successfully determined. Pay attention that if you had to remove some fields from the form, always go back here and click the Redetermine Data Structure button and send a test form. Otherwise, the new fields will not be fetched. Now I can move on to the next step, which is connecting the calendar. Click Add another module, find Google Calendar in the list and click Create an event. On top of the form, add a Google connection, the standard procedure as with any Google login, mine is already connected here. In the Create an event, choose In Detail. In the Calendar ID, choose a calendar you want to have your bookings published to. Mine is called Bookings. Now, when I click the event name, I will see the list of all the fields from my form. Those I've just determined. But pay attention, they are beneath the first tab, marked with the star, not the others. So I can insert my field values dynamically using the variables. For example, the event name will be booking for, and the property name should go here. In my form, I've added a hidden field called post title, that fetches the post title of the current page, which returns the name of the property. All day event, select no. Start date, click the check in date variable. End date, click the check out date variable. The duration, leave empty. And click the advanced settings toggle. You will see the description field to add more information. For example, guest name, email, total, additional services, and so on.
and you can play with the rest of the fields if needed. After you finish, click Save at the bottom of the canvas, go to Scenarios and switch it on. Let's test how it works. I'm filling out the form. And can see that the booking appeared in my calendar. You probably want to show the exact time of your booking, not just a date, right? This is how to do it. So my property CPT has the check-in and check-out time fields. Here they are in Jet Engine, Post Types, and here I have them. When I go to the actual property, let's say Model Lake one, I can change the values of these fields. For example, 2 p.m. for check-in and 10 a.m. for check-out. Okay, let's switch to the booking form. I will add another two hidden fields to fetch the check-in and check-out time of the current property dynamically. Add a hidden field, choose current post meta, then go to Jet Engine Post Types Property, copy the check-in field name and paste it into the hidden field. And the same with the check-out field. I need hidden fields just to transfer data from the form into Make and then onto the calendar. Because I've added new fields, I want Make to catch them, so I open my Scenario webhook and click Redetermine Data Structure. Then I need to fill out the test form. OK, it's successful. Now we need extra settings for the start and end dates in Make. Ensure it's not set to All Day Event. Then click the Start Date field and go to the tab with the calendar icon. Here at the bottom you can find the Parse Date function. Click it and you will see these templates and examples for different date and time formats. My date and time have this format. You can find and change it in the form field and website settings. So I put it here, make sure it's really your format. Mine is days, months, years, and then hours and minutes without AM and PM. Then fill out variables for date and time before the semicolon. After that, do the same for the checkout time. You can just copy and paste this and change the variables. Save this scenario, make sure it's active and test. As you can see, it works. I have an important remark here. Make sure you have set the same time zones on the website, in dashboard settings general, in make settings, in profile time zone, and in your Google Calendar. If the time zones don't match, your bookings might show the wrong time and even date in the calendar. But keep in mind, Google Calendar can actually be set to a different time zone, but it will still match the actual moment in time. For example, this is the booking I've just added. Because the website's time zone is GMT plus 3, but my calendar's time zone is GMT plus 2, which means one hour earlier, it will show me the time and notification at 1 p.m., not 2. But if I open the event by clicking Edit, I will see the original time, the same as on the website, which is 2 p.m. Just like Google Calendar, you can connect other services, for example, Gmail. Click the wrench icon and choose Add a Rotor. This tool lets you add more than one app and launch them at the same time. 
I'm choosing Gmail from the list and then send an email event. The first thing to do here is to connect my Gmail account. I already have it done, so let's proceed to the next step. In the Tools section, you can either type an email address or use a dynamic variable from the list to send this email to a customer. For the rest of the fields, use the same logic as in the previous example with Google Calendar. Add text and variables when you need to add required information dynamically. If you want to send different emails or use different apps depending on form field values, add one more rotor, then click the range icon and add a filter. Here I choose a condition. In my case, the condition will be the number of guests less than or greater than two and set up another application, for example, a message in Slack. Save the scenario and enjoy the automation. Except for the option of connecting third-party services using Make or other automation tools, you can use built-in actions such as Send Email. Go to Booking Form, open the Jet Form tab, click Add Action and add the Send Email action. Here, we should create an email template. In the Mail To field, choose Email from Submitted Form field and select the field where a customer enters their email. You can switch the CC BCC to go to send a copy of this email to the team member as well. Then fill in the reply and subject fields and here in the subject field you can combine plain text with macros just like we did in Make Dashboard. To get a macros list, click the range icon. In the content field you can insert more details about the booking, check-in date, time, and other things such as additional services booked. If you need more information about the property, create hidden fields, choose current meta value, and get field names from Jet Engine post types and your post type for booking items. As a result, you will get them as macros here, so you can add extra information to the email. For example, property address, number of rooms, and so on. In a moment, I'll show you how to use conditional logic to send these emails only when the booking form is successfully submitted and the payment has been processed. At this point, I need a bit of your attention. So Jet Booking basically has three modes or variations in the way it works. Plain mode uses the JetForm Builder's checkout with payments handled entirely by JetForm Builder. WooCommerce is not required in this case. Then, WooCommerce Basic Integration or Checkout, essentially the same as the plain mode, but WooCommerce manages the checkout process, payment gateways and stores orders. Finally, in the WooCommerce-based mode, bookable items are actually WooCommerce products of a special bookable type with additional fields and functionality provided by JetBooking. In this setup, WooCommerce handles everything, while JetForm Builder is not involved at all. So, depending on the mode you have chosen, the logic of sending emails about successful and confirmed the bookings would be a bit different, because most probably you want to send them after the event of a successful payment, isn't it? That's why, if you use the plain mode, where JetForm Builder takes care of the payment, you can set up a condition for an email to be sent only if the transaction is successful. To implement it, go to the Send Email action, click the two crossing arrows icon and choose the Gateway Success in the Event Match tab. You can create another email for cases where something goes wrong with the payment. In this email, select the Gateway Failed event in the condition settings. If you use WooCommerce for handling payments, you can also use the Send Email action, 
However, you won't receive information about whether the payment was successful or not, since the payment is processed at the next step by WooCommerce. Instead, you can either use WooCommerce built-in email functionality or connect WooCommerce to Make and then the email app. Not only Jetform Builder, but JetBooking 2 has its own built-in automation actions. To enable them, simply switch on the Workflows toggle. You can create as many workflows as you need, and each one can include as many actions as you want. There are two types of actions available, send email and call a webhook. As for me, using webhooks is much more efficient at the form level, as I've demonstrated earlier, because there you can fetch much more information and details about the customer and the property much more easily. However, sending an email from here has one cool advantage. You can easily send booking reminders. Choose scheduled and let's say we want to send a reminder to a customer one day before the check-in date. To add dynamic values, Use the macros by clicking this database icon. It's important to understand when to use the booking data section and when to use booking instance meta. User selected data such as checking dates, booking IDs, and similar values can be taken from the booking data. However, there is a subtle point. The check-in time macro will only return meaningful data if the time picker functionality is enabled and users can actually select the check-in time. In our case, though, we have this information fixed and set up in the booking instance and users can't influence it. That's why we need to use booking instance meta. Here, you will need a field name. So go to Jet Engine, Post Types, Properties, and copy the field name you need. For example, check in and check out times, address, and so on. I've started this video by demonstrating how to connect Google Calendar and JetBooking. But if you need two way calendar synchronization, JetBooking supports it through the iCalendar feature. In this case, you'll need a dedicated calendar for each bookable item. We already have a detailed video guide on setting up this feature. Please check the link in the description. I hope you found this video helpful and I wish you the best in building amazing booking websites with Crocoblog. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and join us in the next video.